Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Gamma Die Gamma. So you know, before starting, I would just like to say that uh, finally, finally, I'm on campus in Ithaca, and uh, it's it's great here, by the way. And don't worry, don't worry, I, I'm quarantining right now because I'm an international student. I'm I'm quarantining for fourteen days in a in a townhouse apartment on campus with a friend, and after that, I'll be able to access campus facilities like any other good old student so with that being said i said you know since it's my first time in the americas the first video recorded from the americas should be a complex analysis one a simple one but complex analysis so let's get started So like always, let's call the integral i, integral from 0 to pi over 2, sine of p times tangent of x, times tangent of x, dx. Fair enough. Okay, so notice the tangent, notice the tangent. A good thing, a really good thing that anyone can do at this point is let uh, the tangent of x equal u. So x would mean the inverse tangent of u, dx would be du over 1 plus u squared. Upper and lower bounds become 0 to infinity. If sine of pu and uh, u du divided by 1 plus u squared. Fair enough. Now, as I, as I said many times, this, this integral involves complex analysis. So, let's complexify this integral. Okay, so, uh, let's have a complex function f of z. e to the i p z times z divided by 1 plus z squared. Okay, and uh, the contour I'm just going to draw briefly is somewhat like this. So minus r, r, path gamma, around. Okay, so the contour integral of f of z dz along this path basically is integral from minus r to r of f of z dz and then the integral over gamma of f of z dz now if you just simplify this uh, minus r to r part uh, since the, in the integration is happening only on the real axis over here you can change the z to an x because the y the imaginary part is 0, so x times e to the i p x or 1 plus x squared, uh, yeah, dx, plus integral over gamma of f of z dz is equal to the contour integral of f of z dz. Now, like always, I would like to consider this path gamma integral on a fresh page in a process or in a step that's called the estimation lemma. Okay, so we have to consider the integral over gamma of f of z dz. Fair enough. Uh, let's look at the mod of this thing because anyways, this is a, this is an arc basically, a semicircular arc. That's always going to be less than or equal to integral over gamma of mod of f of z dz. And now what we can do is we can just have simple uh, plugging in. So z times e to the i p z over 1 plus z squared mod and mod dz. And now parameterize this thing. So 
z is r times e to the i t where t goes from 0 to pi for the semicircle 180 degree rotation integral from 0 to pi r times e to the i t e to the i r e to the i t divided by 1 plus uh, r square e to the 2 i t mod dz is r i e to the i t dt but mod dz will just be r dt and then uh, mod of e to the i t will just go be 1 and we can reduce rather convert the denominator using the triangle inequality into something that's a little more uh, practical i think uh, we have we have a p here yeah a p divided by mod of r square e to the 2 i t minus 1 dt which will become integral from 0 to pi r squared times e to the pi r times e to the i t divided by mod of r whole thing squared minus 1 dt now the problem the only problem here is that if you take the limit as we always do as r goes to infinity the numerator having an ex a positive exponential will make the entire integral go to infinity so just to counter this problem basically change r to negative r so what that does is we have integral from 0 to pi r squared e to the negative p i r times e to the i t over r squared minus 1 not not exactly like r to negative r but more like when we were parameterizing this thing we could have taken negative r e to the i t that would have been more suitable you know because if you if you say take that as, as your substitution you have integral from 0 to pi you have a negative r e to the i t e to the negative i p times uh, r times e to the i t divided by 1 plus r squared times e to the i t dt which would be less than or equal to uh, just uh, using triangle inequalities we would have like another r here and that would basically correct the order of this the negative with that r so you just have r squared e to the negative i p r times e to the i t over r squared minus 1 right just the same steps but with this substitution z equals negative r times e to the i t and now because if you take the limit as r goes to infinity you know you have a, a negative exponential and in the limit that r goes to infinity it will decay down so like the denominator is going to just grow indefinitely and then make the entire thing go to zero so it's equal to zero so the mod of this guy is actually less than or equal to zero now a mod can never be less than zero it's always positive by definition so it has to be zero so it's like trapped it has to go to zero that's the estimation lever that this bad integral over gamma goes to zero but when we talk about just 
calculating this contour integral separately we talk about the sum of residues multiplied with 2 pi i for residues we need poles or singularities so in this oh, that singularities are within the contour so uh, look at the function again f of z was z times e to the i p z or 1 plus z squared the only point where uh, that is inside the contour where f of z becomes undefined is when z squared plus 1 equals 0 basically the denominator equals 0 which means z has to be i or negative i but negative i is not inside the contour so ignore that z equals i is the point of is a point that we concerned with so let's find the residue at z equals i and, and we do that by basically having limit as z goes to i z minus i times f of z which is z times e to the i p z divided by now i'll write the denominator as z minus i times z plus i factorized basically this cancels out if you if you plug stuff in you will have i e to the negative with z will be i so negative p divided by 2i so the i's cancel out we have uh, e to the negative p over 2 so basically uh, the contour integral over f of z is 2 pi i times the sum of residues now sum of residues only one residue is e to the negative p over 2 cancel some stuff out we have i times pi times e to the negative p as basically the contour integral of f of z dz fine now let's see the, the bigger picture we know each element now we know that the integral over gamma went to zero we know the contour integral value let's plug everything back into our main equation so okay so we know this goes to zero we know the value of this i pi times e to the negative p and since we took the limit as r goes to infinity we'll do that here as well x times e to the i p x over 1 plus x squared dx we'll have integral from minus infinity to infinity of x times e to the i p x over 1 plus x squared dx i times pi times e to the negative p so notice the i which is telling us that basically the left hand side that we have is purely imaginary which means we should you know equate this guy to the imaginary component of this guy so if we just expand this integral out a little bit we have x times a uh, cosine of px divided by 1 plus x squared dx plus i times integral from negative infinity to positive infinity x times sine of px divided by 1 plus x squared dx is equal to i times pi times e to the negative p so comparing real and imaginary parts this means the real guy there is no real guy here is 0 and comparing the coefficients of i on both sides so we have pi times e to the negative p is equal to integral from minus infinity to infinity x times sine of px over 1 plus x squared dx and how does that compare with our original problem well you may notice that sine is odd uh, simple linear is odd odd times odd is an even function and the denominator is already even so this guy can be expressed as two times integral from zero to infinity because the entire integrand is even x times sine of px over one plus x squared dx is pi times e to the negative p and this guy apart from the two is i 
So 2i is pi times e to the negative p, i is pi over 2 times e to the negative p. A fascinating answer, really really nice, I mean the pi again comes in out of nowhere, again the exponential and seeing the exponential makes sense because we use complex analysis, we need exponentials to basically generalize the sine function on the complex plane. But yeah, besides that, a nice result. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. I think that's it for this video. I mean, uh, I, I hope you really liked it because you know, this one was a quick, a lot quicker than all of my past videos. I was assuming that you know, uh, you know, complex analysis after basically watching all the videos on that playlist. And uh, please like and subscribe to my channel guys, recommend me to your friends, spread the word of Gamma Di Gamma in the math community and stay home, stay safe, stay tuned, peace out, signing off.